You wanna I'm a police you? officer. Really? I'm a police officer. Get, get out of the car! Get out of the car right. now! You cannot do that to somebody! I didn't do nothing! I did nothing! No. I'm just going to eat! Not anymore, you're not. What are you talking about? No, don't, don't put your hands on me, pal. A man on a road trip stopped to rest in his vehicle at a park after closing hours, which Deputy Helton identified as a violation. Helton approached the man, informing him that staying in the park post hours was illegal. Good. Be an audio and video recorded. It's a crime to be in the park after hours. This is considered a park. Uh, so. All right. I'll go find a, another place to watch a movie. All right. Do you got your ID on you real quick? No, I don't. I mean, you're not shutting the door. You're not free to leave. Uh, yeah, I am. You're not. Why am I? Why are you asking? Oh, acting like that? Because you're I kind just of being I'm, rude. And being, I'm being rude. Yes. And how is that? How is that? I'm trying to explain to you. You're in the park after hours, and you're committing a crime. That's a you're crime. Not, it is. Yes. No, it's not. You want to bet? It's a civil offense. It's not. Do you have your ID? Really? No, I don't have my ID on one, me. Five, one. I'll take another. I'm not. You're not getting my ID for sitting in a parking lot, though. No. Sorry. Pardon me? You're not shutting the door on me. I'm not shutting the door. I'm rolling the window down. Now yeah, you can shut my door. I'm not shutting the door. I need your name. You are not yeah, free I'm to not leave. I'm not giving you my name. The encounter intensified when Helton decided to apply physical force. Despite the man's peaceful compliance and absence of any aggressive behavior, Helton aggressively pulled him out of the car, hit him multiple times, and even forcibly took out his dentures. Regardless of the man's appeals and non-resistance, Helton persisted with the use of force, leading to the man's detention. Shoes on for you. You're not going anywhere. And why is that, sir? Why? Because you're refusing to tell me who you are, and you're probably going to end up going to jail. Oh, for not giving you my name. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, then you have at it. Okay. Go ahead and stand up for me. Turn around, face the car. Turn around, face the car. Don't, don't, don't put your hands on me, pal. You're listen. Gonna, you are going to get hurt. I am. Listen, what I'm telling you. Are you audio, video recording this? I already told you that. Get on the phone. Hey, oh. Get on the ground. The man incurred serious injuries from the ordeal, including eight fractured ribs, a lung puncture, a serious head injury, a shoulder trauma, and a damaged lip. This event, characterized by unnecessary brutality and neglect for the man's dignity and health, resulted in Deputy Helton being suspended in September 2023, following the Spokane County Sheriff's Office's awareness of the incident. Officer Matthew Cutson from the Green Bay Police Department pulled over a vehicle driven by Robert Sanchez. The situation quickly escalated. Realizing the police were onto him, Sanchez ran away, prompting Cutson to call for backup. Even with backup, Sanchez kept avoiding arrest, walking around a yard and ignoring Cutson's orders to get on the ground and keep his hands visible. Bravo Charles, 1193. Get back to the car! Sir, get on the ground! Get on the ground! He's just walking around in the yard, won't listen to my commands, has his hands in his pockets. Sir, take your hands out of your pockets! The police thought Sanchez might be armed, increasing the tension. After evading the officers several times and running off again, one of them caught up with Sanchez and used a taser, which didn't work. Get your hands out of your pockets! Taser, taser, taser! Cutson then physically forced Sanchez to the ground and ordered him to put his hands behind his back. Despite Sanchez being pinned down, his complaints of pain and breathing difficulties were ignored. Get on the ground! Put your arms behind your back. Put your arms behind your back! It's on for. Hey, Bree. I'm good. Hey, Bree. I just had one phone. I had nobody. I can't breathe. He kept reaching. Yeah. In his jacket pocket. Oh. I can't breathe. What's your name? Robert Sanchez. Why'd you run? I'm scared. I'm scared. Scared of what? Catch your breath. You're not injured. Okay. I pushed you to the ground. You're not injured. Catch your breath. What's your name? Robert Sanchez. Initially, Sanchez faced charges of resisting an officer and driving with a revoked license. These charges were dropped after an internal review initiated by body camera footage, which showed a mismatch with Cutson's report. We take all allegations of misconduct by Green Bay police officers and employees seriously, and I am committed to handling these allegations in a way that is objective, thorough, and fair to everyone involved. 
This led to Cutson being summoned to court, facing charges of misconduct in public office, a felony, and negligent vehicle operation. The footage suggested Cutson's actions might have been not just careless, but intentionally harmful. On August 15, 2022, what started as a normal day became upsetting for a young person named Zachary Pacheco when state police officer Robert Larson, following certain instructions about a case, unexpectedly stopped him while he was returning from school. Hands up! Open the door! Put your hands up! Walk back! No, hey, no! Open! Let me see your hands! Walk out! Walk out! No! Walk back! Stay right there, keep your hand on your head. Officer Robert quickly pulled out his weapon and told Pacheco to get out. Scared and puzzled, Pacheco did what the officer said and got out of the car, but he was handcuffed right away without any hesitation. Weapons on you? Yeah, he's gonna poke me, stick me? No? Let him look. That's Rachel? Yeah. That's Rachel? You were in school the whole time? Yeah. I live here. It's to my nose. That's the same truck? Same truck, bro. Yeah. How old are you? 17. 17? You know, heartbreaking felon, the felon, right? Heartbreaking felon, the felon. Who's this truck re registered to? For my truck. It's my dad's. Your dad's? His name is Adam Pacheco. Okay, who's Lisa? Lisa? That's my stepmom. Where's she at? Yeah. Where? No, It's called. That's the. That's the little theater. Let me see it? Yeah, let me see it. Yeah, we have to call. Because this is a truck that looks used to. Come on, go here, man. You're not under arrest right now? Yeah, you're just detained, man. Just detained, okay? There's going to be some dead people walking. So your, your truck is just a truck we've been looking for. It's, it's yeah, been involved in some stuff. While handcuffed, Pacheco was encircled by officers who, after asking him and his family some questions, figured out they had wrongly thought he was a suspect due to the truck he was driving. Hello? I'm talking. Oh, sorry, ma'am. I couldn't hear you. So I guess there was a confusion, but this was a truck that we were given out to uh, look out for. I am livid. You know what? No, I understand that. And you guys have his I understand, ma'am, but that's the information that we're given, you know, so that's 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 what we you pulled them over. Your information before. Yes, ma'am, uh, but that's the information that we were I given. Need your name, and I, need, I need your badge number. Okay, Officer Rodriguez. And what is your badge number? 70135 oh, now. 135? Yes, ma'am. You will be hearing from my attorney. Okay. Ridiculous. That's fine, ma'am. You, you literally detained him and put him in handcuffs. He's a no, I understand, but at the time we don't know that, so that's why we were that's what we were rolling for. What are you doing with him now? So he's gonna get released. He's gonna go home. This is ridiculous. You yes, ma'am. Hearing from my attorney. Okay, that's fine. What is your What is your matter? Is this Espanol PD or who are you? So Espanol PD is the one that received the call, and they're the ones that put out the bolo for the vehicle. Uh, this is state police. This is ridiculous. And not, not, nothing in your right mind that he's. No, ma'am. Well, we don't know. We don't know because the vehicle is not registered to him. It's registered to you. Pacheco was let go and a neighbor took him home safely. But the situation didn't end there. Pacheco's family sued the police department, which resulted in the New Mexico Department of Public Safety paying a settlement of $200,000. On Wednesday, May 27, 2020, La Mesa officer Matthew Dega encountered Omri Johnson during a fair enforcement operation at the transit center. The conflict began when Dega thought Johnson was smoking in an area where smoking wasn't allowed. Hey, get the fuck off me, bro. Because you got me for it, bro. I already told you, uh, nigga, coming straight. Me, you look goofy as hell, bro. Stop Sit touching down. me, bro. Obviously, yeah, nobody's going nowhere. Smack hey, 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 what I tell you? Sit I told down. you I was waiting for somebody to come here. Okay. They right here, bro. Oh. Bro, you goofy as hell, bro. Hey, Mr. Dadges, you making a big deal out of nothing, bro. You're the one that you making a big deal out of nothing, bro. You making a big deal out of You real big, though, huh? Dude, hey, you real big. You're the one that just hey, you real big. Degas quickly made the situation worse, almost as though he was looking for a confrontation. Where was I at? Where was I at? Right there. I told you, brother, right the came, bro. That's fine. The people came. I'm finna dip. Okay. I have no reason to be detained by you, bro. Hey, let him party. That's fine, dude. Let him 3 
You've already put my. You've already put your hands on me, bro. I didn't put nothing on you, bro. It's on camera, so you can check okay, me. That's it's all good. Hey, what are we doing? What, what are we doing? What are we doing? Hey, look at my name. What are we doing? What are we doing, dude? I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you. Sit down. Sit down. I'm waiting for somebody to come. Okay. All right, bro. Tell him stop touching me, bro. No. First of all, stop touching me. You can't listen. No, back up out of here. Officer Degas seemed to be abusing his authority, choking and pushing an unarmed civilian while accusing the civilian of being the first to make physical contact. I'm talking to you, and you smack me. Bro, nobody smacked you, bro. Why I smack you? You did it? Why I smack you? You didn't, you didn't, smack you didn't hit my arm? Why I smack you? All right, but why are you grabbing me, though? Why are you grabbing me? Because you keep trying to stand up. Bro, shut the up. Quit talking to me, bro. I ain't got nothing to say to you, bro. All right. At this point, the officer likely realized that his body camera would disprove his claims, so he continued to misleadingly assert his version of events to Johnson. No, bro, you yeah. straight. Dude, you bro, bro, I know I'm straight. I ain't do shit but stare right there. Oh, God, no. <laughs> you, 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 bro, I can see that his eyes are like pulled up. Bro, bro I know, bro. Look at dumb as fuck. Like, oh, shit. Hands on people, bro. bro, exactly. You think you hella hard, though, huh? You think you hella hard. Bro, who the fuck? Bro. Bystanders witnessed the incident, which was a clear case of racial profiling. The officers chose not to collect incriminating evidence that would have supported their allegations. Listen to me. You're being placed under arrest for 241C, okay? Yep. Alright. What's the 241C? What's assault on a peace officer. Ass assault on an yeah. officer? Hey! Okay, bet, up, bet. Bro. Hey. Come on. Hey, bet. Hey, bro, hey. Bro, you are a whole ass. Hey, hey, call, hey, call Jerry. Hey, call Jerry. Hey, Nick, call Jerry. Listen to me. It's hey, a misdemeanor. Hey, it's a sign hey, release. Hey, call Jerry. Hey, hey, call Jerry, Nick. <laughs> You're a, bro, you a straight. Unable to find any incriminating evidence, the officer decided to charge Johnson with assaulting an officer. Start doing all that extra shit, bro. No one's doing anything extra. Right, bro. If anyone's being extra, it's you. Okay. And your friends. All right, bro. Extra is me being this position right now. You know what I'm saying? Because you saw me just standing there. And you know why I pushed your hand off of me. Because you grabbed me. So, you know what I'm saying? It's all good. And I didn't try to run or nothing. But, you know, if y'all want to take to the step, we're cool. I understand. I don't, Copy but, you know what I'm 16 saying? for 241C. These reprehensible officers were intent on handcuffing Johnson, notably just two days after George Floyd's death on Memorial Day in Minneapolis. It's disheartening that individuals like Dega were still part of the police force at that time. Matthew Dega was terminated in the summer of 2020 following an administrative investigation. He later confessed to falsifying details, acknowledging that Johnson had been holding a cell phone, not a cigarette. Despite his admission, a jury found him not guilty. La Mesa agreed to a settlement payout of $125,000. In an unsettling event at East Rich High School, an 18-year-old named Sledge was charged with several offenses following a confrontation with Tyler McRae, a school resource officer. The trouble began when a gym teacher called Sledge out for choosing to play basketball instead of joining in kickball during a free period. What, what happened? Uh, we're playing kickball here and we didn't play. So as soon as the basketball's coming out, he comes out here and wants to play basketball. So I come up to him and I'm like, Tars, you said you were sick. He said, don't, don't approach me like that. I said, I'm a teacher. I can approach you how I want to. I, I didn't do it disrespectfully. I just asked him a question. I just got to shoot for this class because the administrators, my counselor, whoever came hire a teacher for my institute. My institute, I've been taking all four years. Okay. Mr. Black. Even though Sledge tried to talk things out calmly, things got worse when SRO McRae placed his hands on Sledge's shoulder, telling him to leave the gym. It doesn't matter if I'm up there on the bleachers and I'm just now, I'm telling you, I was feeling myself. It's the reason why I came down from off the bleachers. It don't matter about no basketball. It don't matter about no no kickball. It, ain't, it don't got nothing to do with none of that. I said I was feeling sick. If I'm feeling sick, I'm going to be up there on the bleachers. Where did you not understand in that? When I'm feeling myself, I'm going to come down. Where did you not understand in that? Lower your voice. Lower your voice. I don't if want you want to if you want to talk to man. anybody, I, I, I got a lawyer, anything, but you're not gonna come to me no type of way and disrespect hold on, me. Hold on, hold on. Bro, get your hold hands on. off me. Hold on. Bro. Get your hands off me. I said hold on. You got five seconds to get your what hands off me. You gonna do? You got five seconds what, to what get you your hands do? on me. What you gonna do? You got five seconds you got, to get your hands on me. I ain't gonna do doing nothing. You exactly. gonna get your hands off of off of me and get out my presence like you got some sense. The situation became more heated, resulting in physical contact between the SRO and the student. Why is he following me? Because. Up? 
Even Mr. Perry wants you to get you stuff because he wants you to meet him over there. So let's go. I don't care about what Mr. Perry said. I'm in this class. I just got in this class. Okay, I don't give let's a fuck go. What you say to me, dog? Let's go. Get the out of my face. Come on, man. You get finna take a ride to jail, face. dude. I ain't with you. I'm giving you a lawful order to get up and come on now. All right, man. Take the backpack off. We finna go to jail. Don't resist me. The incident took a severe turn when McRae, without valid reason, pulled Sledge by the hair, a moment that was recorded and widely circulated on social media. Don't resist me, dude. What is it? Don't resist me. Don't do it. I got you. The SRO made the situation worse by using pepper spray on Sledge, who fought back, resulting in his arrest. All right, take the bag off. I'm not doing nothing. Take the bag off. Nothing is going to happen. You are, so fixed to, you, get up here. you are fixed to get put in handcuffs I'm one not. way or another. I'm not. Take I'm the not. bag off. Take it off. Take I the bag off. No right to be slumped Take the bag the off. Take off. Take it off. Take the bag off. This event brings up major worries regarding the SRO's use of too much force, underscoring the importance of de-escalation methods and the appropriate management of student disagreements. I'm gonna take the bag off. We can get you decontaminated once the backpack is off. Take the bag off. Take it off. I know it sucks. If you'd have just listened, this couldn't have, this wouldn't have happened. That's all. That's all you had to do was listen. You still gonna resist? Do you want it some more, dude? Cause I, I, that's fine. I got a whole can. Take the bag off, man. That's all you have to do is take the bag off. Take the bag off. The local community, along with pastors and the NAACP, has shown support for the student, stressing the need to respect boundaries and to prevent similar incidents from happening in schools. But to see a child, <clears throat> excuse me, in a school setting, drugged by his hair, uh, and just treated in that way in front of other students, it's humiliating. As everyone looks forward to more footage from Sheriff Austin Garrett, who has promised to show the full story, it's clear that being accountable and transparent is key in dealing with these troubling situations. The trauma experienced by Sledge is indeed concerning. On September 4th, 2020, Ricardo Dos Santos, a famous 28-year-old athlete, and his partner, Bianca Williams, also 28, were pulled over by Metropolitan Police Department officers under the suspicion of carrying illicit substances and weapons. The incident quickly escalated when the officers believed Mr. Dos Santos was trying to avoid arrest, though the reality was quite different. Get out of the car! Get out of the car now! Get into Zane Section 1! Get out of the car! BC Frank's local late! Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Take him, detain him. Get to Zane Section 1, please! Go through it all. Go through it all. Get out of the car! Go through it all. Go through it all. The situation seems to be a case of racial profiling, where the officers acted wrongly and unethically, even though they were aware that Mr. Dos Santos's son was in the car and witnessed everything. Look at my upper car! I got two carts, bro. Bro, the thing is tight. Relax the thing, man. Mr. Dos Santos seemed to be in discomfort, repeatedly expressing his distress and asking the officers to loosen the handcuffs and to stop pressing him against the wall. Untighten the thing. Once you calm yourself, calm, but untighten yourself down there. Stop resisting and calm yourself down. Who's resisting you? I'll take your voice down. Until you calm down, bring you calm down. Like this, bro. Until you calm down, you will stay like this, okay? Once you calm down, we will remove the, sorry, we will alter the handcuffs to the front, okay? Are you going to be an adult and behave? Alter the handcuffs. Okay, what we'll do is, we will put it round to the front, under control, okay? Do you understand? Bro, you may not follow me for no reason, though. Do you understand what I just said? I understand, but you may not follow me for no reason. So let's do that, then. Alright, cool, I understand. You may not follow me for no reason, because I knew it. I knew you may not follow me for a reason. Look at it, I'm bleeding. The officers were discussing with Mr. Dos Santos, mentioning that if he continued to behave well as he was, then they could reposition the handcuffs to the front. Oh. Right, you take hold of that. We'll on. do right arm Bro, first. You might, you, okay? you, 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 right arm. You man are so funny. I'm outside. 
Look, look at my other car over there. Face forward. Look at my other car over there. What well up? Look at my other car, bro. Take him round to the front. I'm out. Oh, the front. Take them the front. It's fine. I don't mind, bro. Front, I'm not, front, I don't stop. mind. Look, yeah. look at my other car, bro. Listen, do we? Check my plates, bro. Listen, look, that one not, and that one. Listen to me, bro. Yeah. I'm out this of my yard. Listen to me. Just, Come, just check the car. Yourself. Have fun. Take Mr. Dos Santos tried to clarify the situation to the officers, arguing that as an athlete, he had no motive to engage in such illegal activities. Despite this, the officers were not open to listening and proceeded with their actions. You man, stop. I saw you, man. You man, just let me go through, and then you don't start, start go, going round and round. For what reason? I did not act suspicious. I'm coming. Training. So, would you like me to explain why we think it's suspicious? Bro, it's not suspicious. Would, would you, would you like me? It's, it's, would you like not, me to explain that? I don't that? need to explain anything. I, I don't really give a bro. Okay, that's fine. If I you don't, don't if I you don't, don't give a, don't a fine. Give a man we've explained why we've stopped you. Bro, if you, if you, if you don't agree with that, let me check not at the moment. No, bro, bro, you're not going anywhere near that car at the moment. I appreciate you've got kids. However, your kid is absolutely fine with us for now. Okay. After the incident, the commissioner apologized to the couple, and it turned out there were no illegal substances or weapons found in their car. We apologized yesterday to, to Miss Williams, and I apologize again for the distress that this stop clearly caused her. Um, that's what I've done, and that's what I'm saying. There's no information on whether any measures were taken against the officers involved. It seems the commissioner's apology was the sole action taken. On July 19, 2023, a Menominee Falls PD officer stopped a vehicle for going 49 miles per hour in a 30 miles per hour zone. However, the situation was about to escalate quickly. You roll all the windows down for me. What's going on? Why are you trying to dip out on me? Okay. You're door dashing right here? Yeah, I swear to God, like, this is where we was going. I could shut where... Yeah, we was here. Not the food. That's why I was Can I see the address? So you pulled a U-turn real fast and pulled in here. When a yeah. cop turns their lights on, you're no, supposed I, to pull I, over I, right I, away. All right? Yeah. You shouldn't be pulling to the back of a parking lot when no. someone turns their lights no, on. No, we understand that, but we was coming here anyway. It's so it was like, weird, instead of holding up traffic and stopping, right we just pulled right here. Customer requested you hand them okay. the order. You should stop. still stop right away, mm -hmm. all right? And you're not getting out of the car right now to deliver that. Not stopping in the middle of the road does sound like a reasonable action. However, the driver explained that they were just making food deliveries. Yeah, hey, she said, why well, you need an idea if it's a traffic stop? I'm just asking. He just asked. You just asking. So you, so you don't need to see it? All right, so you don't need to see it? I'm asking for it. You asking for it? Yes. But I, I don't have to show it. As the passenger, you don't have to give it to me, but I'm asking you for it. That's cool. Okay. Do you have anything here you shouldn't have? Okay. Because it smells like marijuana. Yeah. You don't have any? Because it smells like it. You sure don't want to tell me right now? We don't. It's an ashtray. Okay. Let me see. It's like nothing like using it. Okay. The driver's sister, who actually owns the car, hears the officer asking for ID during the stop and knows that they don't have to hand it over, they can just show it from a distance. This is when the passenger decides to exercise their rights, but unfortunately, this approach doesn't sit well with the officer, as will become evident shortly. Alright, why don't you step out for me? Me? Yep. Why don't all three of you come out? You want to search the car? Leave the phone oh, in there, sir. Step out, leave the phone. Keep your hand out of your pockets. What's going on? Hey. What's his name? TJ. Lisa. He said leave TJ. the phone. TJ. Why you got my phone? Why leave leave the phone in TJ. there. It's not, bro. Why can't you have his phone? It's unclear if it's due to the fear of being recorded or something else, but these officers really didn't want the passenger, known as TJ, to record them. Is that a law? Investigating something. Is okay. that a law? Put your phone in there right now. Put your phone in there. Put your phone in there because I'm going to search the car for me. Okay, we're investigating something. You're not allowed on the phone. TJ, TJ, put it in there. I'm not going to ask you again. Please, it's a lawful order. So it's a lawful order that we can't have our phone. Put it in there. That's your sound dumb. Put it in there. You put your phone in there. I don't care, my nigga. I'm not going to ask you again. I'm not going to ask you again. You got to ask your face on. My nigga. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Hey, stop, hey, stop, stop resisting right now. Stop resisting. 
Without any probable cause to detain TJ, the officer pushes him against a wall and attempts to provoke a struggle, aiming to justify handcuffing him. The officer also threatens to use a taser, accusing TJ of resisting. A report from the American Civil Liberties Union notes that 41% of black Americans report being stopped or detained by police due to their race, and this incident is a clear example of such statistics. Uh, you're under arrest for obstruction. Okay. Oh, what? Obstruction. Obstruction. Right. Back in the car. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, TJ was arrested for obstruction simply because he used his phone to record for his own safety. It's going to be a challenge explaining to a judge how a phone interfered with investigating a car. Another reason why there's so many of us is because some of us are we training. Sh we should be good. There's a lot of I'm like, this dude couldn't take him out. It's like... One, two, three. It's like six of y'all. I just told him to leave. We're just trying to get him that food. I don't even know what house it is anymore. All right. The officer loudly gives orders, separating the passengers to intimidate them one by one. We got enough to just 1080 these guys and get that out of here? Or is it all in that bag? There's no weed. It's just scales in there. Yeah. 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 That scales got some shake on or anything? Yeah. Identify himself. But he was shouting at you saying you need you need to search my bag. Yeah, yeah. Is that guy the driver? That car bill. That's in question? No. Okay. He was a passenger. He's failing to identify. Yeah, I know. So, I don't know, I don't see any kind of... The officers were having a hard time finding any evidence to use against the passengers, and the situation they had escalated was about to backfire on them. Here, bro. Back. Stop stays here. here. Hey, hey, Bro, grab my phone! Hey, Dave! Hey, Dave, just shut the f*** up and grab my phone! They right there! You don't have to say... Just pick the stuff up on the grass. Bro, don't touch my phone. AJ. Bro. Hey, what the f is wrong with y'all? Hey, stop touching him before I slap this up, boy. Hey, All right, let's keep everybody's stuff straight. That's his. That's them his keys. Ultimately, the three individuals were arrested and faced multiple charges, such as obstruction of justice, possession of illegal substances, and interference with a police officer. They all posted bail and were released on the same day. There's no indication that any internal investigation was initiated against these officers. On January 17, 2020, Officer Michael McGillis conducted a traffic stop, accusing Maria Valenzuela of driving the wrong way, southbound in a northbound lane. Right after stopping her, Officer McGillis asked for Valenzuela's ID, claiming she was driving on the wrong side. Valenzuela, confused, questioned the stop and the ID request. He was southbound in the northbound number one lane. I don't know why. Okay. What's your license? I have it on you. Do you have any ID on you? Why am I getting pulled over? Do you have ID on you? No. The situation escalated when McGillis told Valenzuela to put her hands behind her back. Even though Valenzuela followed the instructions, McGillis detained her harshly, throwing her to the ground, which led to her getting injured and distressed emotionally. Why am I getting pulled over? Put your hands behind your back. Excuse me! Put your hands behind your back! No! Put your hands behind your back! Stop! Hands behind your back! Why are you Top 600. Give me another unit. Why are you arresting me? I'm asking for your ID. You said you don't have any ID. Valenzuela ended up with cuts, bruises, and damage to an eye vessel. This incident brings up significant concerns about excessive force and police behavior. Her attorney argues that the force was excessive and cruel, noting that Valenzuela was quickly thrown to the ground with barely any time to react. You know, why are you stopping me? And he again demands ID, uh, and when she doesn't produce it in this literally takes a split second he goes and he takes her and slams her on the ground think that these officers would have the training and foresight to um slowly approach a situation and not escalate raising doubts about the arrest's legitimacy and questioning mcgillis's actions during the incident with the officer's behavior under review valenzuela intends to sue the police department for the harsh treatment she faced 
This is Officer Michael Sippel, who is alleged to have assaulted a man named Christopher Pate after erroneously arresting him for burglary. Pate is going about his own affairs when the officer approaches him, demanding his ID. Have a good day, officer. Do you have ID on you? Have a good day, officer. Do you have ID? Have a good day, officer. All right. What's your name? Stop. Pate doesn't engage, but the officer begins to exhibit visible aggression, pursuing the man. What's your name? You could have just pulled that out. I do. All right, fine. Pate repeatedly informs them that they have the wrong man, yet the officer still attempts to arrest him without any justification. I did not do anything wrong to you. you Put your hands behind right? your back. You have the ID. The situation intensifies as the officers forcibly bring Pate to the ground, disregarding the ID he has just provided them. Behind your you have the ID. Following the tasering of Pate, the officers compel him to stand up, subjecting him to another search and unjustly attributing blame to him for the unfolding events. By this stage, Pate is severely injured. We, yes, we have established, we have your ID. What are you reaching Jeez. for that you won't put your hand What is have, in your waist? What are you reaching for? I have a lighter to light up my cigarettes. Okay, that's, that's all. Why are you being so uncooperative? You would just stop, this would be nothing. This would all be over. But instead you want to act like a clown. And that's, that's why I was asking you for your ID, which at first you didn't give to me. But then, I'll but then when you want to be a smart ass, then we're going to ding you for crossing the road illegally. I apologize. That's it. Well, the officer is then observed recounting the entire incident to other members of the police force, embellishing the story. I go to grab him. Eventually, he pulls out his ID. It's not him. We're like, okay, you're going to play that game? You're going to go for jaywalking. All right. So we found him over here, asking for his ID again. He's saying, you no reason to stop me. Go hands on. All he keeps yelling is, you have my ID, you have my ID. Keeps reaching in front really hard. So he's just being a freaking asshole the whole time. After all that, Paid apologizes to the officers, asking them to release him, but the officer has different intentions. Whoa. You know what? Just don't be stupid next time. So dumb. What? You made what? No, you did fall. this. If I step down with you, fools. listen, stop. If you know I'm not looking for you, when I step out with you, you, I'm oh, here, sorry. sir, sorry. Am I the guy looking for? I'm sorry. No, you're not. Okay, have I'm a nice day. Sorry. Instead, instead, I'm you want to be just all what it is. It's, it's, it's just a now white cop's looking for the black pain guy, pain right? You are want to be that guy today. After the man is placed into the back of the vehicle, he continues to apologize for the misunderstanding. Please, please. I just caught yourself a bunch of charges. Please, please. Slide in. You guys good? But that's when you witness the true cruelty of Officer Sipple. No, you're in jail. I am sorry. Because you didn't have mercy on me. Sorry. You think I wanted to do all this? Please. Do you I think I wanted sorry. to do all this? I don't mean to make you jail. It doesn't matter. Please. You're going to jail. I am sorry, truthfully. You're going to jail. Please. Please. It doesn't matter. Please. After the Rochester Police Department obtained the video, Michael Sippel was found guilty of physically assaulting a man during an arrest and was subsequently brought to trial for his crimes. Ultimately, Officer Sippel was convicted of the charges against him and was additionally sentenced to three years of probation. On May 3, 2015, Gillespie County residents Hundley and Susan Dantzler were awakened by the sound of police vehicles approaching their home. Upon opening their door, Deputy Hinman and Deputy Westbrook entered their home without a warrant, searching for their son. Way to go on, sir. All right, man. That's the way All right. I've been doing this for a long time. Yeah, me too. Okay. All right. Go ahead and stand right down here. Can I see your badge, please? Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, we do need to go in just to make sure that... You... Show me the law. Man, we don't have, we've already explained that to you. We have already explained that to you. We are on recording. So now we're leaving the police state. Now you're bullies. The officers did not provide any documentation, but they informed Mrs. Dantzler of the reason they were searching for her son. No, ma'am, we need to make sure that he is here by himself with or without a female subject that is under a med possibly medical condition right now. Okay, that's all we need to do. Deputy Westbrook and Mr. Dantzler engage in a physical altercation as the deputy becomes aggressive towards him. Take your hands off me. <laughs> no, I'm just saying you stay up here. Are you Mrs. Dantzler? Yes, I am. Okay, Miss Dantzler. 
He's okay. I know my rights, and I, I know that his are being violated right now. No, he's he's yes. being detained, and if he if he's going to resist or fight with my officer, then my officer has to do what he has to do. Okay. <clears throat> The woman repeatedly asserts that her son is not in the house, yet the deputy persists in harassing her. Ms. Stanton, we need to go in and just to make sure that he's not here. Is he here? No, he's not here. I'm sorry that you deal with low-life liars day in and day out. Okay. If he was here, his truck would be parked right there, and you can see the evidence. His truck is parked over there. I said okay. if he was here, his part, it would be parked right here. You can see the evidence of where he parks. When she requests a warrant once more, they evade her questions, stating that it's too late. We have the right to go in there. And you also welfare. told you me, the welfare. can I show you the law? And now you're refusing. We're past that point. We're doing it now. Okay. okay. Why, do, why am I Why do we have such a short why I, window? Why am I hearing movement around inside the house? I've got two cats. Okay, you have two cats. That does... Plus, I just hit the door frame right here with my elbow when I turned. Okay. All right. That may, that may have been the case. Okay. Regardless... I need to go in just to see if he's here, okay? All right? How about if you walk right over there to the very last window and I pull back the curtain and you can see he's not in his bed? No, ma'am. Then they proceed to search the house and as expected, the officer doesn't find anyone else in the house. Don't you come in here. No, you do not right have, inside, you do not have my consent. Okay. You said you want to see where he sleeps. This is where he sleeps. You said you weren't going to look at anything I'm else. I'm just making sure. This that is he, my office and storage. I'm just, I'm just making sure he's not in another room of the house. It happens on, it happens on occasion, okay? Deputies then have to remove the handcuffs from Mr. Danzler, who is visibly injured from the physical altercation that occurred just moments ago. At this point, the officer attempts to salvage some dignity. If you're done, I'd say get the hell out of here. Listen, again, like I was saying, okay, that's all we needed to do, okay? But bully all ass. All I needed to do is that, brother. Mr. Dancer, I don't know what you did to my officer, okay? I wasn't. I, really? I wasn't watching when you were walking over there. I was trying I to. I think I was the one who was handcuffed. No, the Constitution this. protects me now. I will tell you this. If the tables were switched with your son possibly being in some sort of medical exigency. I wouldn't lie to the police I understand to get them to a, control him. If he is possibly in a medical issue and might be over at somebody else's house and we were meeting with them the same way we were meeting with you this morning. You know what? The reasons why. I wouldn't would use the police the exact... officers unless it was a dire situation to be the nannies. The deputies depart from the scene, and three months later, the Danzlers contested the legality of the warrantless search, resulting in the officers being found guilty of their misconduct. Meet Missouri Police Chief Greg Hall, who was stopped under suspicion of driving under the influence. Right from the start, he attempted to leverage his position to avoid any consequences. Uh, do you have your driver license and insurance? Where are you coming from tonight? I'm um, actually from the Halls to White Castles to... Oh, okay. Yeah. The reason why I pulled you over, um, you've been weaving quite a bit. Well, I know. Because I was... Eating my uh, okay, eating while driving. Okay. Um, well, uh, how long has it been since your last drink? A couple hours. A couple hours. Okay. Um, I'm a police officer. Where you work at? Hazelwood. Hazelwood. Okay. The officer, recognizing signs of intoxication, begins administering field sobriety tests to confirm the man's condition. How about this, Chief? Just so I feel comfortable knowing you're not intoxicated and you're okay to go. Can you uh, can you just recite the alphabet starting with letter D and ending on the letter N without singing? So D to N without singing. D? Uh, starting on the letter D and ending on the letter N without singing. So D to N without singing. Stop. 
It's evident that things don't go smoothly. The chief is hesitant to undergo testing, likely knowing the potential outcome. When he finally does take the test, he's so intoxicated that he struggles to properly use the breathalyzer. So we'll do this and, and go from there, okay? So deep breath. Is it all on the uh, dash cam? Yeah. The driving and all the contacts so far? Yeah. After that, Hall eventually agrees to undergo additional tests, and unsurprisingly, he fails every single one of them. Hang on one second for me, sir. Um, just right foot in front of your left foot, heel to toe on that line. Keep your hands at your sides, okay? I gotta tell you something. I'm not... What's that? I got bad ankles. Bad ankles. How old are you, sir? 66. 66. Yeah. For being 66, you're in good condition, though. Alright. So, right foot in front of your left foot. Hang on one second for me, Chief. Um, I'm just going to have you stand like this, or if you're not able to, just stand like that. Let me just go ahead and explain and demonstrate this test for you, okay? By this stage, he could hardly stand upright or comprehend anything. It dawned on him that he would be arrested. Consequently, Hall faced DUI charges, but owing to his special privilege, he was escorted home that night instead of being incarcerated. In New Haven, Connecticut, early in the morning around 6 a.m., police were carrying out a search warrant aimed at a guy they thought had illegal substances. By mistake, they entered the apartment above the one they meant to search. Police must search warrant! Police must search warrant! Police must search warrant! They woke up a woman who lived there who was confused and told the police she didn't know the person they were looking for because she lived upstairs. Anybody else inside this room with you? No, 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 no. No. Why? Why? Where, where's Tim? Who? Tim. You're, 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 Despite this mix-up, the police searched her apartment anyway. During this, they mistakenly arrested the woman's mom, thinking they were in the right apartment. Hands, hands, hands. Hold on, one, one, one second, one second. Yeah, I'll tell you, do the phone in just one second, okay? We have a search warrant, all right? Eventually, the police realized their error, but only after making the whole family stay in one room without telling them why. Chris, can you stay with the mom? Yeah. <laughs> then, some officers went to the right apartment below to do the raid they had planned. After sorting everything out, the officers went back to the family they had bothered to tell them to talk to their landlord about the raid damage. They admitted they made a mistake, promised to give them a case number, and said they would fix the damage soon. We're going to call your landlord um, right after, probably call him now, actually, if you want to know about the damage. Um, provide you with a case number for the search warrant execution, because obviously none of this is your fault. It's all our part. So we'll make sure it gets fixed uh, as soon as possible. Hopefully today we'll get him here to come take care. Despite the big mix-up of entering and searching the wrong place and arresting someone by mistake, luckily, no one was hurt. On April 22, 2023, what began as a standard traffic stop in Elgin, Illinois, quickly became alarming. An officer stopped Myra for speeding and having an expired registration. When the officer asked her to roll down her window, the situation swiftly intensified due to her difficulty in complying. Can you open this one? Does it roll down? Can you roll this one down? Does it not open? You come outside. No, I'm saying I got. I'm talking to you on this side. Can you roll this down all the way? Can you roll it down more for me, please, so I can talk to you? So yeah, all all the way down, please. No, okay. So Officer Kelly, I know the reason I stopped you for your speed and your tags expired. Can you please roll the window down all the way? Uh, how far is all the way? All the way, like all the way down. Sorry, I don't understand what the, all the way is. Okay, let me get your license from you. No, I'm just not. I'm literally asking you. All the way down. Like, to, to Thank you. I appreciate it. 
Even after the officer explained the reasons for the stop, including the speeding and expired registration, the driver, Myra, found it hard to cooperate. This led the officer to request her driver's license and proof of insurance. Yeah, so Shales is a 30 right there, and so you're going 50. So you had 20 over, so a little bit fast, okay? Mark, uh, my pedometer is not reading correctly, so I don't know what it says. So okay. I it, if it doesn't read what you what you're reading this, so thank you for letting me aware. Yeah. Be aware. Okay. Where are you headed to tonight? Home. Home. Yes. All right. Yes. Do you have uh, insurance in the car as well? <laughs> All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um. Can I give you the email version? Yeah. If you have it on your phone, that's oh, fine. Okay. The officer inquired about the driver's alcohol consumption after observing empty alcohol shooters in the vehicle. The situation heightened when the driver mentioned she intended to call her lawyer. How much have you had to drink tonight? How much have you had to drink? Tonight? You're just not going to answer? Because you've got a couple empty shooters on the ground. Right there, it looks like three of them. Yeah, that's not pertaining to tonight. Okay, so you can't have one, two, three, four. I don't. So I got explain to people previously. I don't. There's multiple, multiple people that drive my car. So okay, it doesn't know. matter. You're still in possession of it. Okay. Okay, so, I understand. Okay. It's not, I mean, it's no probably problem. just not a good idea, if, if, even if someone else is drinking them in your car, to leave them there. Okay. I got you. I understand it. I thank you for your, your concern. Okay, I'm going to run back to my car real quick. Just do me a favor, hang out here, I'll be right back, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Officer Caliendo. You said what? Caliendo. And then, what? what is the purpose of the pullover? Uh, you're going 20 over the speed limit and your tag's expired. That's the reason. Okay, let me call my warrior. Oh, you no, know, I'm not going to, don't, you, you no, can, no, no, I'm, I'm not going to have no, you. No, no, I'm not seeing Okay, hang out here. The officer detected signs of potential impairment noting the smell of alcohol and a slight scent of vomit in the car. Hang out with her. She's probably drunk. Um, she's got shooter. She's probably DUI. Um, over here. The situation became highly tense when the officer forcefully instructed the driver to get out of the car. The woman's refusal to exit and her determination to contact her lawyer resulted in a physical altercation. I need luck on the insurance. No, she actually said that uh, she gave it to you. You don't. You never gave me the insurance. Did, did you have any luck pulling it up? So I didn't give you in, your insurance. You don't remember not nope. giving me anything. Don't worry, my brother's coming right now. No, 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 no. No one's no, gonna no, come. No, 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 no. So what? What's what's gonna? Ha I mean, if he he's not gonna come to the traffic stop, so what go ahead, hang right up the now? phone for me. No, nope, I'm not gonna hang up the phone. Okay, so you're gonna get arrested for obstructing if you don't. Well, let me talk to my lawyer. Okay, so I'll what? I'll call my lawyer. Let me call my lawyer. What I'm gonna, gonna have you do is step out. No, 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 step out. Bro, you can't pull on my car? Yeah. Bro, you can't pull on my car. I'm not gonna, no, you're not gonna pull Step out, step out. Step out, step out. Am I doing anything? Step out, step out. I'm not instructing any for you. You're grabbing me. Stop out. You're grabbing me. You're grabbing me. You need to get out. You're grabbing me. You need to get out of here. You're grabbing me for no reason. Don't turn the car on. Get out. The incident became significantly distressing when the officer forcefully removed the driver from her vehicle using aggressive methods that appeared excessive compared to the original reason for the traffic stop. Now pull away. Get out. Get out. Come on. Because I'm black? No, it's because you have open container. Okay. Get out. Show me the container. Get out. Show me the Get container. Out. Get out. Hey, dude, open Literally, I'm not doing anything. Get out. You're under, I'm not you're under arrest. You're under arrest. So no. Get out. Dude, dude. Get, you get the song. Say the, say the, say the, uh, Step out of the Did he read my rights? Step out of the vehicle. Did he read my rights? Step out of the vehicle. Did he read my rights? Step out of the vehicle. No, did he read my rights? After a considerable struggle, the driver was arrested for obstructing and resisting arrest. Eventually, with much difficulty, she was secured in the police cruiser. Alrighty. Let's uh let's go. They to the my rights. You you know me. Oh, cool. I'm saying they read my rights He's after. Us, right? No, it's not okay. Please, yeah. You don't search me. Because I'm not on that Wait, hold on. I feel the master. Who got a master? You got a master? Okay, you ain't got a master. You got a you got you got a 
Vassals are great! Who got vassals? Oh, the employment of force in this arrest prompts inquiries into whether such actions were necessary, particularly given the relatively minor nature of the initial traffic stop. Officer Matthew Gorney stopped a man for a traffic offense, and soon after, more police showed up. Without realizing his body camera was on, Gorney went back to his car. A passenger filmed him seeming to throw a bag of illicit substances into the car. I got specks of green, you're good to search for me too. What was that? What's what? What's the what word? I got, I got you on camera, bro. I got you on camera, we're all good. Hey, bro, you just threw that in here. Yeah, because it was in his pocket and I don't want to hold on to it. Hey, bro, what's that? What's what? That you just threw in here. What's the what word? I got, I got you on camera, bro. I got you on camera, we're all good. Hey, bro, you just threw that in here. Yeah. Gorney was caught explaining that the bag was from the driver's pocket and he didn't want to keep it. The driver doubted this explanation. Hey, bro, you just threw that in here. Yeah, because it was in his pocket and I don't want to hold on to it. It's on their body cam that they took it off of him, so. You just threw that in here, bro. I got you on camera, man. I'm telling you where it came from, so. I got you on camera, bro. It's an empty baggie at the moment, too, so. Okay, buddy. Later, the driver, known as Fish Kid Sav, a local rapper from Racine, Wisconsin, talked about the incident online. He mentioned he was detained, but not arrested, and planned to take legal steps. Fish Kid Savo, local rapper from Racine, Wisconsin. I am okay. I'm not locked up. I was detained for a little while, and they talk about investigation. I am the guy that you see going all over the internet, surf the surfing the internet with the police trying to throw the baggie in my car. Um, I am okay. I did not get arrested, but I am taking legal action. I have contacted a lawyer due to the weekend. It's not um, it's not going as fast as supposed to. The process is going a little slow. I have sent the video to news articles and every... And After the video spread, the police chief defended the officer, saying nothing illegal was done and no evidence was planted. One thing is clear, and that is that evidence was not planted and the officer did nothing illegal in this incident and certainly nothing in the realm of what he was accused of. When we get it wrong, we will take ownership of it and we will make corrections. But this case, we did not get it wrong. I think it's very unfortunate that a, uh, a short cell phone video clip can generate all of this negative attention. This response didn't calm people down, but made them even angrier. With the driver seeking legal help and the police chief standing by Officer Gorney, the situation led to more public upset and scrutiny. On May 10, 2020, Susan City PD officers responded to a call about a potential medical emergency and found themselves at the home of Sergeant S. Austin, a military veteran. They were investigating a report that someone might have ingested nail polish remover. He's at the window. The situation escalated quickly when one of the officers inquired whether the woman in his house was his baby mama or girlfriend, which was certainly not the best way to begin the interaction. Who's your uh, girlfriend or your baby mama? The lady we just saw. The, the lady we right can here. see. First of all, that's my wife, Marvel. Okay. Marla. Okay. Yeah, who? Kanama. Who so who's this? Why don't you, can you go with the mother? What, what's the problem? So we're here on a welfare check. We have to make okay. sure she's okay. Why? Because we received a call from North Bay for the incident that occurred earlier. Look, look right there. Must be an investigator if you're investigating something. When the cops asked for ID, he refused to give it to them. Nine years, U.S. Army. Now, what's the problem? Okay. What's your person? I don't have to identify myself to you, do I? Am I under investigation? You want to tell me what's going on? Don't knock on my window. Can you come out here? No, she can't come out there. Y'all need to tell me what's going on. This is my house. We told don't, you. Don't tell me. We're here for a welfare check. Not the right address. No, welfare checks are what? No, I, 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 I got it. Y'all violating my rights right now. We're all violating your rights. You are. How? Because you, Wait, which, you, which right? You, which, you, you, which civil right are we violating? Why are you raising your We're not violating any rights. Why is he raising his Why is he raising his voice? So we are here on a welfare check. I can go inside my we house. We are here on a welfare check. Hey, hey, I don't know what that means. Stop talking. Let me talk. I don't have Over to stop a child talking. That okay. ingested, right. that ingested. Why is he I don't like to. I don't like him. A person He's raising that his voice at me right now. Or er, nail polish. 
Okay. Okay, so we're we here, here at your base check right on there. Okay, I'm, your wife. I'm gonna talk to you. First of all, you came to my house and say, Is that my girlfriend okay. or my baby mama? That's my wife. So okay. that's disrespectful starting okay. off. All right, sir. So that was disrespectful starting off. And, okay, and then he's raising his voice at me. Okay, I okay. understand. So now I can raise my so voice, look. right? So, no, you can eat it. What's his problem? Okay. When the cop continued to be disrespectful, the sergeant let him know who the boss was. Okay. Nah, I need your badge numbers. I'm sorry. That's fine. I'll I'm give sorry. you my badge number. But so the reason we're here is now to make you're sure telling somebody me the reason is after okay. You're telling me to eat it, sir. So you tell me to eat it, right? That, I, Marler, I messed up. I apologize. Now that you on film, you messed up. No, so so you, you haven't violated any of my so, rights. No, the sir. first thing you said to me coming here was, so, is sir. that my baby mama or my girlfriend? Sir, then he so started raising his voice at me. From North Bay. Pause. I need your name and your badge number. Officer Conma, 107. Thank you. I need your name and your badge Officer number. Officer Marler, Meanwhile, the female officer crossed the line by starting a conversation with the sergeant's wife through the window. Ma'am, sure okay. we're here to check on a female. Okay. Is your child okay? Did you, What's did your you name? Did you or did you not tell me? Is your child did? okay? Did your child? You don't. You don't want to answer time. because that's what he said to me, Marler. And, and she's at my window. I told you not to go to my window. Close the blinds. Do you have a 14 year old son? Close the blinds. Hold on, sir, sir. Close the blinds. Sir, do you have a 14 year old son? Close the blinds. Close the blinds. I'm not going in the house. Are your Close children the blinds. okay, ma'am? Are your children okay? Okay. okay. Do they f look okay, guy? He's asking if my Go children are okay. okay. Who the f is that? Okay. What the f are you talking okay. about? We're, we're gonna leave now. Can I? Can I Wait, explain to you? you guys Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. I, you're right. So all we right. I got it. we got a call. Now I was trying. That. We now were trying to explain from the. No. Did you go to North Bay today? What the f is that? Get in the house. What the f y'all talking about? Nobody knows what y'all are talking about. Well, you're not letting me explain. You never explained. You started asking questions. He said, "Is that my girlfriend about maybe mama?" Okay. I apologize for that. Okay. I'm here to clarify. So. Eventually, the officers recognized they had gone to the wrong address. Officer Maror returned to offer an apology, but by then. The harm had already been inflicted. Okay, well, here's the deal. Clearly, we came to the wrong address. I apologize for that. Okay. I don't know what North... Right, but I'm talking about in this situation. Okay. I don't know polishes. I don't know what a 14-year-old boy is. I told you that multiple times, and since y'all are investigating, I have my degree in criminal justice, so I know about okay. investigation one-on-one. -on -one. I actually am master's so educated. This, this... I'm actually starting okay. a doctorate this fall, and I just got my intelligence installed because I said, y'all are violating we're basic not, rights right we're now. We're not violating. We got called here. So we have you a right to be here. You didn't get called here because everything you're we asking did. me is North nothing Vega. to do with you. Okay, here. okay, I'm explaining to you. So if you're not that person and your children are fine and your wife is not I having a mental breakdown, that. then I'm going to leave. Okay. Right. And 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 I explained that. But you were but talking you, over us and you're not letting you, us speak. But I did. Okay. I did. I'm going to leave now because clearly this isn't under. You're not understanding. Right. I, I could have left too, but I'm, okay. I told you I was trying to help and I am understanding, but I don't think you understand. You have it. not tried to understand. You yelled I, at us this whole time. No, I didn't. I yelled at you after you raised his voice at me. Your partner raised his voice at me. Okay, and I apologize for that and I will talk to him. All right, so you apologize for it. So you recognize he raised his voice at me. I so recognize you're saying it. I talked over you and yelled. He did. You're still not. You're, you're still supposed to be the professional. Okay. I'm supposed to be the civilian, right? The officers had no choice but to leave after the sergeant informed them he would be filing a report. Ultimately, Officer Maror was let go from his position in the department. This serves as a reminder of the consequences of mishandling a situation and underestimating the repercussions of targeting the wrong individual. In Rochester, Minnesota, two police officers approached a South Sudanese man because they thought he matched the description of a suspect they were looking for, but they didn't know what was about to happen next. The situation completely turned around when they discovered the man was actually an undercover FBI agent. Here's how the entire incident played out. You've been, you're racial front, oh, am I? Yeah, you're wrong. You're assuming I'm someone that I'm not. Get out of my face, man. You guys are harassing me. Yes, you guys are. Hey, that's you're right. harassing me. Yes, you are. No, no, no. He's harassing me. Why are you harassing me? You're assuming I'm someone I'm not. Okay, if you're not, then. No, 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 no. I'm free to go. Okay. Us. Am I being detained? Yeah, you are. For what? Thank you. I think you have more. You think? Yeah. That's an illusion. That's, that's an illusion. You think? Stand up your hands. I'm not here. For what? I don't have a horse. You're very wrong. So, let's get this straight. Our two brilliant officers thought this man was a suspect simply because he looked like someone who might have committed a crime, basically just a guess. Moreover, the man was quite sure they were mistaken and even accused the overeager officers of racial profiling. 
What's even more astounding is that these officers thought their mere suspicion was enough to detain him. Don't they understand the law at all? The law demands that police have reasonable suspicion based on concrete facts, not just gut feelings, to believe someone has committed a crime. This means that everything these officers did from this point on was not only illegal, but also unconstitutional. No, you are wrong. What do you mean if you're wrong? You're wrong. You're wrong. Okay, hearing the officer say, if I am wrong, I am wrong, for the second time really hits hard. It's a statement that's both unprofessional and scary. If officers begin using such excuses and logic in situations like this, it's alarming to think what they might do in more serious scenarios. This kind of attitude could potentially lead to disastrous outcomes for innocent people. I didn't do nothing to bad. I had to bad. For what? For what? Did you tell me for what? Oh, for what? You're the wrong guy. I'm, 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 I'm under arrest for what? No, no, no. If you got the wrong guy, I'm, I'm suing all of you guys. Let me get your card. Can I get your card? Yep. Can I get your card? Uh, okay. I'm not standing up. Front. Listen, I'm not under arrest. I don't have a warrant. I don't have any. Unfortunately for the officers, the entire encounter was recorded on a cell phone camera, showing how the man continuously highlighted their mistake and pointed out their lack of a warrant for his arrest, a fact the officers should have been well aware of. The situation then rapidly intensified when one of the officers attempted to grab him. Hey, yo! Hey, 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 hey! Hey, hey officer! Hey, 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 multiple voices are heard, and it seems these individuals recognize the man. They are informing the officers that they've made a significant error and have the wrong person. That's not the wrong guy. You guys are stupid. That's not you. You guys are racial profile thinking I'm somebody. Hey, Take some cuffs off. You guys really had nothing else to go to college for but be a cop and harass me? To assume I'm somebody I'm not? My ID's in my back pocket. After the arrest, thinking it was just a routine situation, the officer decided to follow through on the man's request to check his ID. He was about to be taken aback by what he discovered. Oh, what does that say? Go. What does that say? Oh! Wrong guy! Oh. Wrong, guy. Wrong guy! Oh my Wrong god! Guy. It turns out, the individual the officers arrested wasn't just any suspect. He was an FBI agent involved in local law enforcement activities, landing these officers in deep trouble. You can just picture the officers' faces, complete shock. It's not common to arrest someone only to have them reveal an FBI badge. Noticeably, the initially arrogant officer who maintained constant eye contact with the presumed suspect shifted to avoiding any eye contact at all after checking the ID. No, get the f off me, dude! Get off me, dude! Bro, you f up. I need our cars. I need your supervisor over here. Call your supervisor. Call your supervisor. The agent then calmly lays out the entire situation to the supervisor, who clearly appears uncomfortable by now and seems to be eagerly searching for a way out. Sir, can you please come here? Are you the supervisor? These guys are racing for a me. They assume I'm someone that I'm not. I told them I'm not who they think I am. And they, still and they said, no, nope, you are. I'm positive you are. But as soon as the agent demands their IDs, he showed his true colors. I need their cards. I need your card. I need your card. I need, I need, I need your card. No, no. Yes, I request your card. Why is that? Because you can't go out there and you're talking to this. Bro, that was fucked up. No, they serve the people. Yes, I'm the people. You guys serve us. So, I would like, 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 Okay, I would like your card. Yep. And I'm going to follow the support on you, you, and you. Rather than admitting his team's error as he ought to have, the supervisor opted to justify their actions with weak explanations for the mishap. Get them in line, will you? He might have thought. But realizing he had no option but to comply with the agent's request, the IDs were produced. First came the supervisors, followed by those of the two officers who initiated the entire debacle. Is that how you guys work on this? You assume someone is someone and that's it? That's all you guys need? Yeah? Oh my god, what is American game? Guilty yet arrogant, that's a perilously dangerous mix. Officers like these tarnish the reputation of law enforcement as a whole. Instead of acknowledging his mistake, as he rightfully should have, we witness a man devoid of any semblance of remorse. It's disgraceful, officer. But what else can be expected when they're guided by such supervisors? On July 9th, Officer Voyer and Officer Diaz had to stop three teenagers because they were accused of pointing weapons at the police. This occurred while the police were attempting to make an arrest following a lengthy chase throughout the city. I 
Code three, code three, apprehend. All right, all right. Code three, code three, apprehend. Cough him, cough him, cough him, cough him. Cough his ass, cough his ass. In a shocking turn of events, Officer Diaz was seen repeatedly hitting one of the teenage suspects in the face until another officer stepped in. At the same time, Officer Voyer was hitting the teen's shoulder several times. Shut these sirens off! Shut these sirens off! All right, get a rescue! All right, get a rescue! All right, shut these sirens off! Shut these sirens off! Yup, 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 yup. I have 15, get a rescue over here, right? Yeah, King Street is salmon. All right, guys, we're live, all right? We're live, we're live, all right? All right. All right. Who's ever not necessary, go back in service. Yeah. We should get this car. Yeah, I know. Okay. I got you. All right. Guys, whoever's cars are out there, if you're not needed, go back and serve. Guys, where's some of these cars on? Let's go. Back these people up. Guys, let's get this crowd back. Let's get this crowd back, guys. All right. Guys, what do you need? Uh, I want these cars that are not that we don't need go back in service. I right, 15. I just want a couple cars that made the apprehension to stay with me. Everybody else clear their scene, all right? All right who made the apprehension? When physical strikes seemed insufficient, Officer Diaz resorted to spitting on one of the suspects, whose face was already bloodied. I just want a couple of cars that made the apprehension to stay with me. Everybody else clear their scene, all right? All right, who made the apprehension? I just want a couple of cars that made the apprehension to stay with me. Everybody else clear their scene, all right? All right, who made the apprehension? All the cars are clear. All the cars are the cars are clear. All the cars are clear. Watch out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay, all right, that's good, that's good. Let's look at the shot. Yep. Yeah. All right. Gun is that, is that a rifle? Okay. All right, I'll Look at the shot over here. Let's go. Back up. You're not getting arrested. Guys, I want these people right here, if not obstruction. Let's go. If you don't leave, you get a charge apprehension. Let's go. You guys okay? Yeah, we're all set. Sorry. All right. I got him. Okay. All right. Is he all right? Yeah, he's all right. Sorry. Okay. He's in and out. All right. You got the medic stuff. Okay. We got the rest of coming. All right. Okay. All right. All right. We got a rest of coming for him. And I don't know how many people. Let's make sure the rest of get in. Yeah, we all, all set up team. How many? How many people are in the car? How many people are in the car? Johnny, were you part of the apprehension? How many people are in the car? All right. So where's the, we have one here. One's over here. Where's the third one? Where's the third one? There's one in here. I think there's one in the car back there. All right. Where's the third person? Hey, we don't have to. If we have crowd problems, we don't have to rush them out of here. Yeah. Yeah, we can. All right. Get the uh, Pawtucket out of here, the way. Well, let's go on. Uh, did you guys make an apprehension? No, right? You guys didn't make an apprehension? All right. All right. I'm going off scene. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After the suspects were taken away in a police car, an investigation into the behavior of both officers took place a few months later. Surprisingly, no charges were brought against either of them, and they were both permitted to continue their duties. 
Ronald Shields, a 52-year-old man, was arrested and faced charges including felony hit-and-run, possession of illegal substances, and having a weapon in his trunk. The officer's report alleged that a small bag of illegal substances was found in Shields' front left shirt pocket. Officer Lee, who performed the search, testified in court, supporting the report's claims. However, body cam footage revealed a different scenario. It showed an officer picking up a small bag from the ground, not from Shields' pocket as the authorities had claimed. LAPD officer Gaxiola is captured on video picking up Shields' wallet from the street and then bending over to pick up a small bag containing white powder, later identified as illicit substances, from the ground. He seems to place the bag inside the suspect's wallet, a detail omitted in the official report. Gaxiola then appears to try activating the body cam to record, aiming to make it seem as if the bag had always been in the wallet. Unbeknownst to him, the body cam automatically saves the 30 seconds before activation without audio. After securing the wallet and bag, Gaxiola is heard boasting to other officers about discovering the substance in Shield's wallet, which contradicts the report stating the substance was found in Shield's pocket. There's a little bag of Marco in there. Where? You see it? Just to, so you know, sir, inside this uh, thing, there's a little bag of Marco. Just to let you know, sir, inside his wallet, he has a little bag of Marco, yeah. Faced with the discrepancy between his statement and the body cam footage, Officer Gaxiola declined to comment, raising questions about the truthfulness of the initial report. Body cam video clearly shows that you're picking it up off the ground and putting it in the suspect's wallet. Why would you do that, sir? No comment. This incident prompted an LAPD investigation, and the substance charges against Ronald Shields were reportedly dropped due to the inconsistencies highlighted by the body cam footage. A police officer attempted to pull over a car, alleging that the driver failed to slow down when instructed. The driver challenged the officer's suspicion for the stop and repeatedly requested to speak with a supervisor when the officer demanded identification without providing a clear rationale. Am I being detained? Yes, right now you are. For what? What reasonable articulable suspicion you I got that I committed down, a crime? You didn't slow down. You can't, that's not a crime. You can't tell me to slow down. When I don't even, I'm driving up there and you told me to slow down? Hand me your ID, Reasonable, sir. articulable suspicion of a crime. Tell me what it is. Hand me your ID, sir. Let me get a supervisor. Hand me your ID, sir. Supervisor. Hand me I'm your ID, I'm asking you sir. for a supervisor. Hand me your ID, sir. I'm asking you for a supervisor. Hand me your ID, sir. I'm asking you for a supervisor, sir. Hand me your ID, sir. What reasonable, articulable suspicion have you got that I committed a crime? Hand me your ID, sir. You just said to me, you asked me to slow down and I didn't and I'm sitting still, sir. Asserting his rights, the driver questioned the legality of the officer's actions and the necessity of providing identification when already stationary. I'm just asking for your ID, sir. Why do you no, need my ID, no, sir? Just, just, just give him your We ID. didn't do anything wrong. He's not, he's not, we're not going to jail he's for done, Right, but he's done running. I heard everything come back and they that said I'm fine. The tag. I didn't I'm the owner of the car. I know, I just checked him to see who you are. Right, but you don't have any articulable suspicion. I do. Uh, what's I the crime I told you to slow down how and you kept you on going. How can you tell you me to just, slow down when I'm just sitting still, down. sir? How can you, you tell me to slow down? You were not sitting still when you went blowing by me. You weren't up there. Despite the driver's objections, the officer unlawfully seized the driver's wallet and ID. Stepped out in the road to tell you to stop. No, he told us to pull in here. He grabbed my ID. This cop grabbed my ID out of my car. Sir, you have my wallet back to me and I'll take my ID out. You don't need my wallet. It's got money in it. The officer attempted to justify his actions by claiming the right to demand identification and detain the driver for not slowing down, despite the contradiction in the circumstances. Get your name and badge number, sir. Badge number is 1212. And your, la your, your last name? Pack. Pack. You tell me why you reached in my car and grabbed my ID like that? Because I asked you to hand them to me, and I could have put you in cuffs. I asked you to, to slow down. You did not slow down. I had every right to pull you out of this car and detain you when I asked you for your name and you did not give your name. I asked you for your license. You did not give me your license. Please explain to me. I what do you mean right you to... asked us to slow down? We when slowed I told down. you to slow down and you did not slow down, you only slowed down when the man stepped out in front of your car. So I'm not going to tell you that again. I do have a right to detain you. There's nothing. You have a right to ask you for your ID. We were slowing down to come through this intersection. That we don't know what's going order. on. I, I didn't say it was a lawful order. I, I said, do have a right to ask you for your ID at any time. So whether you want to or not, you do have to comply with that. Whether you're recording that or not. That ain't, the recording's just for me. That ain't got anything to do with it. We're slowing down. We come up over this hill. We don't know what's going on. When you on. came down through there and you saw blue lights right there, and then I tell you to slow down, 
You did not slow down. You kept on going right past me. Inconsistent with his initial statement, the officer falsely alleged varying speeds of the vehicle. Doing five miles an hour. No, you were not doing This gentleman come an out and slowed us down. 30 miles an hour. We wasn't doing 30 miles an hour. Yes. You were doing more than that. You were doing 40. Hang on, don't back up yet. Eventually, the officer realized his inability to counter the driver's knowledge of his rights and skepticism towards the legality of the stop. On May 21, 2023, Vancouver police officers Gabriel Patterson and Andrea Mendoza were called to address a shoplifting incident. However, without conducting any investigation, the officers exhibited extreme aggression towards a 19-year-old boy. Hey, go ahead and stop for me. Come on. Well, where you got me? Yep, I told you under arrest. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The boy asked the officers what was happening, asserting that he wasn't the one involved in the shoplifting. This is for a stupid theft. Theft of what? Well, we're gonna f figure it out. That's when the situation began to escalate with aggression. Without issuing any warning, the female officer initiates the use of a taser on the teenager. Despite the boy's struggles, she continues to escalate the situation by issuing further threats. The boy promises not to resist, but Andrea remains furious. I'm going to go. Knock it up or I'll do I'm it in your... I'm done. At this point, the boy informs the officers that he can't breathe, but they disregard his plea. Soon after, the officers recognized the need to summon medics, yet they persisted in manhandling the boy. We are code four. It's a medical. Code three. No, we need a supervisor. Fortunately, the medics arrived promptly. Oh, we have a female. Other units coming in. Check for a female. Her description of the call. She took off running. Yeah, have a weapon. Uh, northbound, yeah. behind Walmart. For laying on your third, you won't lay in your butt. After the video of the incident went viral, Andrea Mendoza, who had served with the department for seven years, was placed on administrative leave. On June 20th, 2020, in Leland, officers were called to a scene where a 14-year-old girl reportedly slapped her 18-year-old boyfriend in a grocery store parking lot. Despite the boyfriend's reluctance to press charges, Officer Jeremiah Wood, a trainee, saw this as an educational opportunity. The officers made multiple visits to the girl's home throughout the day. And him yelling at me about how I'm a piece of shit, how I'm cheating on her, how I cheated on her, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm not even with her and I'm not with you, so it's not cheating, you know? Well, is this something that, that you want to pursue? Nope. So, so would I have to go to court? If well, you would have to completely go through a, a packet and fill out all your information and give a statement. And yeah, you, if it went that far, you would have to do that. All right, but I think I'll just ask why I'm going to go back and head to that address. See if she's there. Uh, see if her parents are there or anyone's there. Hey, ma'am. Yeah. Are any of these their Hi, cars? The Lovelock Police Department, come to the <laughs> By noon, they convinced her father, John Sears, to let them speak with his daughter under the guise of a casual conversation. So, um, an ex-boyfriend uh, over at the Safeway. She got into a verbal argument with him and then slapped him on the face. Um, several other people saw the same thing outside of the students. Uh, they, she confirmed that they had been in an intimate relationship. However, things escalated quickly when Wood suddenly and inexplicably manhandled the teenager. When John attempted to protect his daughter, Wood tased him. The family dog, reacting to the chaos and aiming to protect its owners, attacked the officers, who then resorted to choking the animal. Stop. No, this is my daughter! Put that down. This is my daughter! She's 14! You that. can't arrest a 14 year old! No, you cannot! No, you can't! Bull let me get my dog! You are not gonna Let me get my fing dog! You are not gonna walk He's over. He's gonna start fighting everybody! You guys, I didn't do shit. I was trying to get my dog so he wouldn't attack you! The male in custody, we're still working on the Oh my god! We'll take additional work. Rod, did you see that? I was trying to get my dog! We're still trying to get around. Dude, just stay away from me, please. Please. Hey, hey, watch out. Guys, put the dog! She's dark coming out! God! 
Get back. There you go. Dog's in. Thank you. You're welcome, I'm sir. You help you in. Guys. My God. No wonder why you guys get down ramp. You are ridiculous. You are. Shut the way you just your treated mouth. me. That's Spread fun. your feet. And I haven't searched it. I have nothing. I would like to speak to your chief, You can please. speak to them all. You're not going to speak please. to chief. I would like to speak chief to your chief, Chief doesn't care please. what you have to say. I did absolutely nothing to you guys. I didn't even threaten you. Okay. Well, you're going to go to jail. You. You're going to jail. For what? Obstructing resisting. I didn't obstruct nothing, the dude! The woods glasses are smashed. Evan got bit by a dog. There's a gun handle coming. There's a taser cartridge right there. That's my taser cartridge. Yeah, that some We're gonna need to see if that dog's crying on rabies. If not, you need to start a rabies regiment. That's a mean no little, uh... Yeah, he was, he was buying him and yeah. the girl, you get so that's up? why... I just here, and then I, well, I don't know. It was okay. biting my neck and shit when I was coming the stairs. Yeah. So I went to grab her, grab the dog, and then it, I got it, and okay. it, I was holding it, and I turned and lifted yeah. my finger. Yeah. And then I, I had it. I reeled him in. <laughs> I thought I'd say he grabbed by the neck. <laughs> okay, we're going well, in the house. Amidst this turmoil, both John and his daughter were arrested, with John facing charges of resisting arrest and his daughter charged with harassment, domestic violence, and resisting arrest. All charges were eventually dropped, leading the family to sue the police department for their excessive and unjustified actions against them, including the physical harm to a father, his daughter, and their dog. Hold on to our final clip, which is the most scariest and most creepiest one. And if you like what you saw, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on our creepiest videos. NYPD officer Douglas Debonet, while off duty, was involved in a road rage incident with his neighbor's son, during which he threatened the young man. Instead of um, retreating, the gentleman say, if I catch you on my block again, I'm gonna kill you. To make matters worse, when the boy's parents returned home, they encountered Douglas outside their residence, causing a scene and throwing a tantrum. Break it. Yes, you I didn't break it. I pushed it the, forward. That's all I did. When he broke it off. You pushed it forward, right? I pushed it forward. That what are you doing on my didn't property? Break it. What you doing here? Get off my property. What is your son coming by Get my house? My don't property. touch me. Step Get back. Off my Step back. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Step. Don't hit me. Touch me again. Don't touch, touch me. me. You're on my house. Touch okay. Me again. But what Douglas did next was totally insane. Touch me Get again. out of here with the pen. You, what a you want to I'm a police me? officer. Really? I'm a police officer. Get the pen anyway, away. Back up. Back up. Really? What are you doing? Back up. What are you doing? Back up. I'm videotaping you. Back up. Okay? You're not supposed to pull that off. driving past my house telling his yep. friend to drive past my house casing my you house you, don't me? Casing, you almost you stabbed me with a pen what you just well, threatened to stab me with the pen on if camera if you touch me again if you touch me again Sir. what you doing you just threatened to stab me with a pen which precinct you work you just threatened to stab me with a pen which precinct you work okay which you precinct? just threatened to stab me with a pen really you want the cops here get the cops here yeah they are coming that's fine you put that on to stay away from you my neck. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, because you. you put a pen to my neck. I said if you, you touch put me a pen, pen and I to my neck. Touch me again. Doesn't Everything, matter. Well, you put a pen to my neck. The cops called him, man. Don't you see? The co that's why he's yes. here. It's fine. It's fine. Listen, you need to be disbarred from whatever precinct. Okay. You, you cannot be using our taxpayers' money. Okay. To, to no problem. You Tell your son to stay away from my house, please. Okay. He drew. Okay? Yes, he did. I have him on camera. Go to your Okay. Walk by your house. Yeah. I have cameras too! Okay. Douglas needs to understand that repeating a lie numerous times doesn't turn it into the truth. Even more damning, his so-called evidence ended up being just a clip of their son driving down the street. Let him call 911! Let me call Mr. Hall, I'll tell him. It was a cop. Did he show his f***ing Yes, he did. <laughs> he did, yeah, he did. Yeah, your husband put a f***ing pen to my neck. Are you <laughs> no, I did not. I said, get off my step! Put a pen to my neck! Get off my step! I'm just trying to talk to him and Everything find out what's going on. Really? Okay? Yeah. Everything is Look, recorded. So yeah. we'll see if he I didn't, put He it. didn't come to my house? Okay. Here you go. So there's one. He stopped right there, right? Now he sent his friend as well. Okay? But how the, do you know that's him? You didn't how do I know it's him? Visual? Because he's It doesn't matter. matter. It's the, the goddamn same car. And he's on the street. He never come to your house. That's his car. I came over here to talk to Why him. Why did you break okay? off my mirror? I didn't I break the here. mirror. Yes, you did. I did not break the mirror. All I did is accident. Your car is he almost. Killed me. I'm scared because I didn't cause the accident. How do you, you, you I went to car. talk to him. Yeah. I went to talk to him, and he drove into the car in front of him. Because he was scared. You you came out to What am I gonna do? He does. He what am I gonna do? You're on my property. Pull a. Yeah, because you, you, put, a you put a pen to my neck. I said you touched touch you my neck with the pen. Touch you touched my neck with the pen. With the point of the pen, you touched my neck. I didn't touch it. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Really? 
First of all, I you came, have a nice I came to have a conversation, listen, okay? Listen, listen to me. Sir. I came to have a conversation. I was in a talk room. I was going to apologize you before. You, you came and you took a I pen said, and put it to my neck. No, I said yes, you, you touched me again. I didn't touch you. And you went right here. No, I didn't touch you. Yeah, you did. No, well, we'll see. We'll see. You want to watch? Douglas had a quite eventful day. Not only did he pull a weapon on someone, but he also broke his son's side mirror, and the day was far from over. Douglas faced charges of menacing with a weapon and criminal mischief and was suspended from the NYPD without pay. Meanwhile, the family he targeted is suing the NYPD and stands to receive compensation. Indeed, a lawsuit becomes almost inevitable when a police officer behaves erratically. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated with our latest videos.